Ladies and gentlemen, esteemed guests and fellow filmmakers, welcome to the KinoMentor channel. Today, we are pleased uh, and the privilege to introduce to you a true expert in the realm of camera stabilization and cinematic excellence, Mr. Tom Lebaric. He's an RE Trinity specialist and Tom's passion for the art of capturing mesmerizing visuals knows no bounds. He has a wealth of uh, knowledge and experience in the film industry, and he has dedicated countless hours to mastering the intricacies of the RE Trinity stabilizer system that has propelled his craft to new heights. As an RE Trinity expert, Tom possesses an intimate understanding of the system's capabilities, all the intricacies and unique features that system presents. From the precision of what the Trinity's three-axis gimbal uh, gives you with the versatility of the Trinity arm and the seamless integration that the Trinity sled has, Tom expertise shines through every shot that he's composing. But it's not just technical proficiency that sets Tom apart. It's his artistic vision that truly elevates his work and dedication. With the Ari Trinity system as his canvas, Tom brings stories to life and he paints with light and motion. He effortlessly crafts breathtaking sequences and captures the emotion uh, of every moment. Uh, his dedication to his craft is evident in his collaborative spirit the most. He understands the importance of seamless teamwork on set and offset before we prepare for going on the set. He works closely with directors, cinematographers and the entire production crew to achieve the desired vision uh, of the team. His expertise serves as a bridge that enables effective communication and ensures that every shot reflects the collective creative vision of a given project. And throughout his illustrious career, Tom has lent his expertise to a multitude of projects, including a couple of my projects, ranging from major motion pictures to independent productions. And his work has graced the silver screen, leave audience captivated and spellbound by the seamless camera movements that he creates and the exquisite precision he achieves with those shots. So today we have the honor of tapping into Tom's wealth of knowledge so let us embrace this opportunity to dive into the world of the RE Trinity stabilization systems alongside a true master of the craft. So get ready to explore the possibilities, discover the nuances and unlock the secrets of cinematic magic with Tom today as your guide through the realm of stability and movement in motion pictures. So please join me in welcoming Tom, an unparalleled RE Trinity expert whose passion and expertise are sure to inspire you and ignite your imagination. So welcome, Tom, and we're so glad to have you today on the show. That's fun for this amazing intro. <laughs> thank you, thank you, and hello to everybody. Yes, well, welcome, Tom. I think that uh, one of the most important things, even though we talk now about your introduction uh, briefly in the intro, would be to, uh, you know, if you could present yourself and kind of like go quickly through how you came uh, across the idea of uh, mastering uh, all kinds of stabilization systems. So maybe it would be nice for people that are watching to to talk a little bit, a little bit of, about the history and how uh, you came to, to master the, the, the Trinity and what were the stabilization systems that you used before? Yes, yeah, so my name is, uh, like you said, Tom Leverich. Uh, at the moment, I'm uh, based in Dubai and uh, most of my work is uh, uh, based on Steadicam or Ari Trinity uh, uh, shots. Uh, Besides other things that I also do, DP and underwater, and, uh, things like that. But but mostly I'm trying to focus now on uh, Ari Trinity because as a, as a kid, even as a kid and a teenager, I remember when I watched the movies, I was impressed how camera floats through, through the space, how, how it follows somebody, how stable it is. And I was always uh, trying to mimic that with my, my small handicap with the TV tape and stuff, how to do something like that. And it was all, obviously all that shaky and stuff. And then as teenagers, we would put a, a DV cam on a plate, just normal Play from the kitchen and that will give you somewhat stabilization because there are a couple of you know points there that, that is already stabilizing 
then I tried uh, experimenting with old glide cam, a very primitive thing that you're just holding with one hand and then you get higher than so on. Uh, and then I got really uh, into Steadicam and I learned about it, what I can do. And I find out there's a, a, a workshop for, for Steadicam every year in Pennsylvania. Uh, so Tiff and Steadicam uh, host the uh, workshop, five or six days intensive workshop uh, by the inventor of the Steadicam itself, uh, which is uh, Garrett Brown. So I was really happy about it and I booked my flight to Pennsylvania and I... So, so I sorry to, to, sto to stop you there, Tom, but it's important. I think it's important to mention that Garrett Brown was the guy that worked with Stanley Kubrick in uh, actually devising the, the Steadicam itself that... Uh, that was used on The Shining, the movie, the first time, because Kubrick required to have these low shots that used to that, that they had to follow uh, the small main character, the boy Danny Torrance. Yeah, and so they had to devise, yeah, yeah, and they had to devise this kind of uh, system that could stabilize and have these smooth shots that would follow uh, the main characters because that would be impossible with the classical rails that that uh, you know or a dolly that you would find going on rails to achieve such a shot so that's why garrett brown himself is very important as the inventor of the steady cam and and a collaborator with uh, stanley kubrick so please go on tom sorry my as my teacher and the instructor uh, gave me even more and, and uh, one enthusiastic approach and, and yes i'm going to do it i'm going to do it uh, so when this happened <laughs> In the classroom, we all like, like, just it was like, like a pin drop silence. We were looking at the, at, at him and Garen Brown, like he's our hero, you know, like, oh my God, we are really in front of this, this gentleman who did all these uh, movies. No, not only that one, and Tootsie and Indiana Jones and, and, and Rocky as well, and so on. So, yes, uh, we learned there a basic of Steadicam, uh, the static balancing, dynamic balancing, how to walk forward, backward, don't want uh, style. Lots of lots of tricks uh, with different cameras, how to walk up the stairs, backwards and, and so on. So it was really, really hard and intensive uh, five days course. And uh, what impressed me with, with Garrett Brown, uh, I said, how long did it take you to learn Steadicam? And he said, I am still learning. And that means like after yeah. like whatever, 40 years of his career. So that, that was another thing that like blown me. I'm like, oh my God, that's, that's it. I'm going to do this and, and I'm going to constantly learn and improve and and, and try something different, something new. So uh, people ask me, like, if I pass this uh, five days uh, uh, training, am I a Steadicam operator? I said, no, you're not. You just know how to balance the rig. You, you know theory about it. You learn about movies. You, you, you learn how to walk. But are you a Steadicam operator after the five days workshop? No, you're not. When are you a Steadicam operator then? Well, I guess it's like a, it's like a, a lifetime profession and every day you can learn something new. There is every day, every shoot, is some, something different, something challenging. Challenging When director or DP comes and says, Tom, we have a 3.5 meters uh, height and I want you to, to, to jig down towards the subject who is lying on the floor, a dancing lying on the floor. How are you going to do it? So so I, I, I can still say that after all these years, I'm still learning. I'm still learning steady camming and, and operating at Trinity because I think every shot is unique, every job is unique. Yeah, well, so when you so, so yeah, yeah, so when you're talking about the training itself, so technically you went first through the steady cam training at that time, the Ari Trinity did not exist, right? At, at that specific time, you only had steady cam, right, as, as a tool to stabilize the shots. Classic steady cam camera on the top, sled, gimbal, and, and that's it. Um, so that was 2007, and ever since 2007, I kept learning uh, and practicing steady cam. First, I was renting steady cams uh, from different rental houses. Then I bought a small one, uh, which was flyer steady cam that can only support like seven kilos of, uh, of weight. Then I uh, progressed to a bigger one, uh, Archer 2, which is uh, actually sitting there in the corner. I'm hearing some sounds, like some squeaky sound. Is that coming from you or? Yeah. Yeah. So it's, 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 it, it takes lots of training, I believe, uh, for the body as well, for the muscles to learn, back muscles, lower back muscles to learn how to how to be, be, be hard and how to support you and so on. 
So it, it takes time. You can't really say you finish this five days uh, workshop and then after that maybe you practice uh, chasing your cat and then say you are a steady chemo operator. I, I don't believe that, you know, it, it takes it takes sometimes years even to master the craft, to master the craft, which I thought I did somewhat master it and then Ari Trinity came into the game and then I felt I have to start all over again. Yeah, so that's so that the... yeah, so that's what's interesting because like okay, so you received training and you got training and you started working in the industry doing you know like uh, work with the steady cam and st stabilizing shots with the steady cam and that lasted for like what let's say 10, 15 years, right? At least twenty more before the Ari Trinity came 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 about. So maybe you can let us know how it happened that that you switched to the Ari Trinity because you know more about that lasted around 12 13 years and then uh, i saw on youtube all these uh, new in inventions and then you know what they're always talking about and and, and somebody in dubai asked me uh, do you have a shot but uh, it's not possible to do it with a steady cam we need added trinity i'm like oh i don't have added trinity so i realized that now productions are asking more and more for this added trinity so i i knew basically what it is it's a okay. yeah okay so that yeah, yeah. So that was the point where you actually realized that you need a Trinity. So maybe I think uh, for people who don't know, maybe we can explain what actually the Ari Trinity stabilizer stands out from other camera stabilizers, you know, because now on the market you have many uh, stabilizers, uh, bigger, smaller, you know, uh, cheaper, more expensive. So it, it stands to reason now for us to explain uh, to people and future filmmakers that are watching this show now, what is so special about the Ari, Tri Ari Trinity stabilizer? So if you can, you know, explain to us what it is that, that, that Ari designed and manufactured and why this prominent company in the film and television industry came about uh, creating this tool for filmmakers. What is it that makes it so unique? Yes, uh, so basically with the regular Steadicam, if you are following somebody uh, uh, in the high mode, eye level, you cannot go then to, to his feet uh, uh, in, in the same take. Uh, you, you can just angle. Basically, when you when you tilt down, the Steadicam camera goes down as well with the lens. Now, okay. the revolutionary part with the, with the Trinity, we have here Trinity 1 and Trinity 2, which Trinity 2 just recently uh, was released. And Trinity 1 came around 2016, something. So uh, the, 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 the interesting part about this is that it's a gimbal on the Steadicam. So the operator has the gimbal uh, with the joystick and uh, it can tilt the head up and down. I will actually demonstrate that uh, over here. So this is, the, this is the gimbal. This is the joystick. We can go, Tom. Maybe we can go with the with explaining uh, one thing at a time, so that people have a nice vision of what it is. So you you have basically the the if you're showcasing the Trinity. So we have the we have the head, we have the arm, and we have the sled, right? So maybe if we can start with the head. The head, which has the motors for the roll axis. So let's say I can show you quickly. This would be uh, one second. Uh, this would be the, the roll axis. So you can go Dutch. Let's say you have a music video. You want to go from 45 degrees Dutch in one angle to another one. You can you can do it. You can Dutch it. OK. And then it has the tilt. So you you can follow somebody, follow, 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 and then tilt, tilt up or tilt down while you are giving the whole sled. There you go. So this is the, the basically biggest difference than the Steadicam. It's the gimbal on the sled. So the head is consisted of these motors for the tilt and for the roll. Camera is in the middle, which has to be neutrally balanced. So if I turn the gimbal off, you see how the camera is like perfectly balanced. Only with a perfectly balanced camera inside the ring of the Trinity, you can operate properly without vibrations, without stressing the motors. So basically with these uh, little counterweights, uh, you, you balance the sled. If you put the battery, maybe it's back heavy, then you move it in and out. If, if it's uh, too much uh, bottom heavy, you add weights on the top. If you add here focus motors, then it's too top heavy, then you uh, remove those and so on. And so, 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 basically, so basically the head itself is the primary control unit that, that's connected to the camera, right? And that's where you have the, the three axis gimbal system, which you're showing now, which can rotate side by side, up and down. 
and also this is 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 that the part of the camera that that compensates for the unwanted movements such as vibration shakes and tilts is that the the the, the part that controls that okay so so this would be it this is connected to the sled and the gimbal that you have and down down here is obviously electronics and batteries you can put up to the three batteries and the pendulum uh what uh how so, is the shakiness and on walk is obviously the uh that's the arm that's arm there obviously different yeah. different arms from different manufacturers i have a couple of them this particular one is from flow cine next arm i find it very nice very smooth i just changed this canister in uh, according to the weight of the camera system. so this is the, the arm actually absorbs the shock and vibration that's caused by uh, the operator's movement right or external fa factors like walking or running and so on yeah the arm that every every steady consistent no matter which manufacturer comes with a two section arm like this with the uh, spring cores inside uh, or a titanium spring that that basically you adjust you tighten or you loosen depending on the weight of the camera and the sled so when you walk this this actually neutralizes your your movement um, and shakiness in general so, so yeah, yeah this so is the so the, what the, because the arm uh, obviously is designed to offer that you know uh, alleviates the absorbing shocks and the vibrations that are caused by by the movement but what kind of range of motion you have uh with that arm so it allows probably smooth vertical and horizontal movements right but to some extent i guess jib up and down i can go very low mode uh, maybe up to my knees and up to my let's say above the hand level somewhere like that so Again, different uh, different arms from different manufacturers have different boom range, but more or less are in the same range. So, so for normal day-to-day -day operating, a uh, little bit above the head and up to your knees, down to your knees, it, it's more than enough uh, with this arm. This one is G70X. This is from Stelic and Tiffen. This is really a uh, good arm. It holds up to 30, 31 kilos of, of weight. It's actually very heavy as well. It's, it's about okay, yeah, kilos. I guess th this would be also a question that's interesting in terms of weight. The, each of the cameras that we're using, like, for example, the Ari or the RED and so on, have different weight. And depending on the lenses that you're putting on the camera body uh, the ca and whatever other extensions, like, you know, I don't know, a matte box or whatever it is, uh, it has a specific weight. So are you switching and using different arms to compensate for that weight or how does it work? Yes, that's why I have you. Uh, a few. If I have a lighter setup, I have this arm. This one is a G50 uh, from Tiffen. Uh, this one holds up to 22 kilos. So if I know that my setup will be lighter, I don't want to, to carry extra weight unnecessarily. I use this arm. This this is enough for 22 kilos. Uh, these two I kind of switch. Sometimes I like this one. Sometimes I like G70X. This is really a monster arm. This is for extreme a heavy setup. There was a feature film that I did in Abu Dhabi. A uh, couple of months back, and uh, I had a Alexa LF uh, with uh, cook anamorphic uh, lenses, mud box, uh, filters, uh, motors, my sled batteries, and my vests also heavy. It was around 35 kilos uh, all, all together. Those vests that I have to carry, some call them harnesses, but they are actually. Yeah, okay, nice. yeah, that, that would be interesting if, if you can talk a little bit more in detail about the vest. What, what, is, what does the vest do, and why is it used? Uh, this, these are the, the shoulder parts, this goes around my waist, it's very comfy and it distributes all this weight that I have to carry uh, over my body and uh, it's obviously easy to walk with it and it doesn't uh, make me fatigue. Uh, yeah, there are different designs, different pieces. Um, this one is, I, I like this one, this is also from Tiffen, this is ExoVest and it's back mounted. For some way I prefer having it back mounted. Uh, it, it kind of better fits to my back, but again, that's personal preferences. Some people like to operate it on the front, some people like to operate it from the back, some like Tiffen vests, some like uh, Walter Klassen vests, there, there are really so many different ones. Uh, I have three, I have three, again, I had one old one, then I bought a new one, then, then I realized I need one more just as a backup. I had everything as a backup actually, two arms, two Steadicams, two Trinities. Uh, three racks. Um, yeah, because on so any yes, on yeah. any film set that we're working, you need to have a backup of the backup, right? You cannot have just one CF card or or card for recording. You cannot have just one lens. 
no uh, room for error and I tell that I throw, uh, I'm sorry, but my arm broke. What, what shall we do now? No, I just pull out the, the second one from my, from my van. It never happened. Uh, <laughs> luckily, it never happened, but uh, I even have two Trinities. Sometimes when it's like a very important and huge shoot, I, I shoot with the Trinity 2 and Trinity 1 is just in the car as a backup. Also, this is the Steadicam uh, Artemis uh, with the Volt gimbal horizon stabilizer. And the older version, this is my first Steadicam uh, Tiffen Archer 2, also with Horizon Stabilizer. So sometimes I go with the Steadicam and I have a second Steadicam in the car, or my shoot is with the Trinity and I have the Steadicam as a backup. Uh, yeah, sometimes I, I take the second vest as a backup, but definitely arm as a backup, uh, because uh, as I said, there is no room for error in such a big, big production. Um, sometimes so I can, can you... Yeah, can... you Yes, could could you talk a little bit about the sled because you mentioned that the sled is the lower part of the system that's holding the camera and the trinity head but it contains th those uh, components like the batteries and control units and uh, the additional mechanisms that are there can you talk about that on the trinity one so this is the power distribution box you can put uh, three batteries that are then hot swappable so if i take one or two out as long as the one is there you will not shut down the system that's that's the monitor uh, um, for my obviously to see the framing. Uh, so yes, power is distributed from here up to the sled for the motors, for the monitor, for the camera, for, for everything. So that's the basic three components, or let's say four of the of the Trinity: uh, the gimbal, the the center post, the battery compartments, and this is where the joystick is. Uh, Trinity two, however, that, that that's that's really interesting. Uh, Many production were asking me, Tom, can you do 360 with the with the Trinity? Uh, technically, no, you cannot do 360 with the Trinity Trinity one because this cable here doesn't let you. So you can only do up to here and up to here. So there was no way to do the 360 like uh, Omega AR yeah, Revolution had. So the Trinity two obviously came with this amazing improvement that all of us were so happy about. Now there is a cable which is longer and it can do 360 with the press of a button. So it goes like this and it does 360. Now we have this uh, master grip here where I have like buttons I can program, I can tilt. So here I can tilt and I can, with this little button at the back, I can roll. So you can see how camera is rolling. I can roll it or I can just press the button and it will do the 360 which is mostly used like in music videos or some some commercials obviously you so uh, so tom in terms of uh, now that you're showing this to us it's interesting for people who don't know so when you're operating obviously you have the vest you have the arm the camera is there with you and you move across the space to 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 crack capture the shot but is there anyone else that's controlling the tilt up and down and the rotation 360 of the camera or it's something that, that is controlled by a separate operator? That I can, with this master grip controller, I can control uh, both uh, tilt and roll. However, you can use uh, on Trinity 2 Ari wheels and then uh, director of photography can control as well, uh, tilt and roll and I just walk. With the Trinity 1 uh, that is uh, analog system, what I did, I invested into these uh, node inertia wheels. You can see them here. So I can give it to the director of photography and then he can uh, basically operate, as you can see here, tilting. Ah, okay, so that so works he can, remotely. He, he He's looking at the shot well and, co and controlling that aspect. Okay. Uh, this inertia node of wheels and then he can uh, independently control tilt and to some extent roll uh, just 45 degrees to 45 degrees, I, I would say. Uh, because of the limitations of 21. Uh, yeah, some, some DOPs are very comfortable with using the wheels. They know uh, what to do and they love to do it. So I'm like, okay, use the wheels, have fun, and I will just walk. And then we talk on the on the clear comm, on the communication. We talk, he told me, okay, I'll, uh, he tells me I will roll now, I will feel down, be careful, I will feel up or whatever. So yeah, these are two different things. Um, Biggest difference between 21 and 22 from the production standpoint would be the 360 row. Yes, 360 row. So, yeah, also so that's what. Yeah, that's what I wanted to ask you. So, in terms uh, before we had the steady cam, and that allows you to stabilize the shot in a way where you're actually moving in space and it's stabilized, but it doesn't allow you to roll or to 
to tilt the camera or you could tilt with the with the steady cam as well you could not you could the sled itself and, and you can roll if you dodge if you dodge the whole sled yeah but then you are offsetting or not yeah you're offsetting, offsetting yourself but now for the first time when they created the trinity you can actually walk stabilized but actually tilt and roll at the same time right that's the main benefit of between the steady cam and the trinity that's correct why is this very very interesting uh, it, it adds creativity in the shots in a way that now i can go low to low mode tilt down to let's say lady is walking i can follow her shoes or a dog walking next to her as we are walking i, I can slowly slowly jib up jib up and tilt down still tilt down and maybe make her a little roll and then come in front of her to her face things like that really really creative stuff we can put it's a very known on youtube uh, test for that when you put a sled to the car let's say through the passenger seat you lower the window you put the sled inside to the driver and then you pull out from his uh, from the passenger side through the window out then he gets up from the car and walks away and stuff i did uh, something like that obviously car window has to be wide enough for and uh, tall enough to, to so you can put the sled in but uh, creativity like this creative shots like this you can do uh, a friend of mine in dubai also did something really interesting like that he put a um, uh, lady was reading something uh, he, he twisted 180 degrees and then as he tilted up he pulled back so creative stuff like that that you could never before uh, be able to do with a with a classic steady cam sometimes i do still like obviously classic steady cam when it's some walk and talk just normal stuff, uh, no crazy movements. I, I still like uh, Steadicam. Some people ask me, what do you prefer, Steadicam or Trinity? I, I don't know. I, it's very hard to say, you know. I, I really like both. Depends depends on the shot. Yeah, sometimes, uh, like I said before, uh, one very creative director in Dubai told me that he wants to go from almost four meters high up and, and, and slowly come down to the la lady. She's a dancer on the floor. So I said, yeah, sure, I can do it. Uh, for that reason, I have this... Uh, Super post, actually, so long. I don't know if you can see it on the screen. Uh, okay, so with, with that, with that, actually, uh, how should I call it? Pole, super pole, or whatever it is. Yeah, you you can extend to three meters. Yes, I can extend uh, the sled. I can extend to two meters because I also have these extenders. So I have two of these extenders. They come on each side, plus the super post, uh, plus uh, I have something called third arm. I'll show you what the term arm, arm is. So the term arm, sorry, let me adjust. So the term arm has this socket block that goes on the left and travels up and down. So I can add another 28 centimeters of, of booming range to the whole thing. And uh, I like to operate with this on the Segway, so I'm even higher. So I have a, a Segway that is a Segway X2 modified for steady camming. It has the uh, hard mount okay okay so that, that that that's an interesting thing because on on many of the shots that we have from the various uh, behind the scenes that you worked on we see you like going full speed on uh, on 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 a, on a crazy segway that's like you know you're going super fast so can you explain how that segway helps in terms of i guess tracking the talent that's either cycling or walking fast or running or something like that how does that help in combination and how is that segway modified to accommodate the uh, trinity um that was a regular segway, but there is the one company in the US that does modification to that segway. Basically, they put bigger tires, they put the bumpers on the side, uh, that they, they make the part where you can install the, the hard mount, the pole, and then stuff like that. How it helps? Well, first of all, I don't have to run after the car, after a subject. I have kids, they have to run. And of course, kids being kids, we have to repeat the shot 10 times. After, after 10 times carrying 30 kilos, it's not really fun. <laughs> To run so i just jump on my segway i don't have to wear anything uh, on my body vest arm arm is attached to to the uh, pole uh, so everything is like i'm free i'm completely free and then i just lean forward segway goes i lean backwards segway, segway stop it took me a couple of times to get you know familiar with the movements because uh, what are you adding in the whole system now you're adding something else uh, driving so you have to drive you have to watch where you are driving so you don't trip over something there is a maybe a, a pavement or, or a hole in the in the asphalt or something so you have to watch where you are driving and plus in the speed you have to frame up as well so it gets a little bit harder and more complicated but i actually like challenges so i always try to push myself a step further okay it's easy to operate segway with a small steady cam but how to operate segway with a two and a half meters uh, pose that's going all over the place and try to frame up properly and do 360 at the same time 
so I like these challenges. I like to push myself, and that's why I say, uh, that's why I say, I say always, I still learn. I'm still learning uh, operating because every shot, every day uh, on the set is something new that we can try and implement. In, in, for that shot, I managed to reach uh, 3.7 meters. Yes, that's that's really high. I uh, 3.7 meters, and I slowly, slowly, slowly jib down until I reach lady space, like maybe this much above her, her head. So it was like a Jimmy Jib shot, basically. Uh, yeah yeah so that, that to... yeah that's uh that's actually very helpful if you look at the standpoint of uh, production because uh before we needed to set up you know rails and then to have a dolly on top of that rail and then if we wanted to change the shot we would need to uh, put the camera on a jib to go higher up and then lower and so on so the idea of using uh, from a production standpoint um, the Airy Trinity actually is more cost effective because you can work faster. You can achieve actually two things. It can be more cost effective, but it can also uh, give you creative shots and, and better freedom of movement than that you can achieve with, uh, let's say, any other uh, device, right? Uh, that exists out there so if you could tell us for example what would be the difference between let's say now in layman's terms using a, a techno crane versus using the trinity because i guess then on a techno crane you could do all the similar movements but what would be according to you uh, a, a better tool or why would we use a crane in a, a techno crane in a certain area and not use the trinity in another so maybe you could talk about that a little trinity techno crane is uh, uh, uh precise super precise because that's that's just like one straight line going out it's longer uh there's no human factor involved uh, whatsoever uh trinity trinity with the super post and the extenders again uh, can be in some small small areas where you cannot bring techno crane there was one shot that i have to do the scene was like a, a wedding scene uh so i i put again super post with the extenders i went above the chandelier to the you know nice uh, uh reflections of the crystals of the chandelier and I jib down and I jib down and I went above the table and I pushed in as a techno crane towards the bedding couple. For instance, there is no way we can bring the techno crane that was on the first floor and, and things like that. So there, there are obviously times when you definitely need techno crane and operator with a uh, trinity cannot beat that up. But there is, again, times where, where you cannot bring techno crane in a, in a room or a bedroom or somewhere else where you can use the uh, Artemis uh, superpost and, and Trinity with that one. What I like with, with these systems with Ari is uh, they are so modular. So I can use, uh, start from the uh, Steadicam, put on the Trinity, I can use short post, long post, the extenders, they all fit uh, together. It's, it's one system, it's Ari, it's an Ari ecosystem. So, so everything fits uh, together. And sometimes I play around and, and combine, take this from one flat, put another one. All the older Steadicam have all these cable soldered and, and, and pushed through the sled and you cannot disassemble or extend and so on. Nowadays, you just need five minutes. You you open, you unscrew the, the post, you put another one, you put the extender, you put the super post and you are ready to go. Less than, than, than seven, six, seven minutes, you are ready to, to achieve that, that long shot. So I kind of uh, like these challenges and, and, and achieving like a jibbing down shot from 3.7 meters. That's the highest one. Now, the next one, I'm going to try to go 4.2 meters. Uh, for yeah, 4.2 meters height, and then go down all the way to the to the uh, floor. Lots of your piece asked me how low can you go, Tom? How low can you go? Because they really want to go like like so low. Like I had to uh, follow the football. Uh, the guy is kicking the ball. I have to follow the ball. That's not no way you can do it with, with standard Steadicam. Even with the extenders, uh, post extenders. So that one is super post uh, perfect. Which yeah, I I have not. How is that? I mean, in terms of your back and uh, maybe it can be a related question, because if the camera goes so high and then you have all of this weight, uh, obviously you have the vest to absorb some of the weight. But how do, do you do some specific exercises for your back to stay strong, your core? Can you talk a little bit about that? Because I think to anyone attaching such a, you know, huge amount of gear and expensive gear and, you know, also in terms of uh, of the sheer uh, weight that that you need to carry, how does that reflect on your body? I mean, that would be an interesting thing to talk about. Healthy life, healthy lifestyle is obviously very important. Uh, definitely, no no smoking. You know, you need to have a healthy lungs to run, and then you have to have a good stamina. Lots of people think that steady cam operator has to be a you know a bodybuilder and, and stuff. But if you look around, like all my colleagues, steady cam operator, we are all skinny actually. <laughs> we are we are very skinny guys, and some are even thinner than me. 
uh, it's not about uh, muscles and, 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 and how, how fancy you look like, you know, in front of the mirror in, in the gym. Uh, it's about the stamina. It's, it's really about the stamina. How long can you endure this? And, and it all comes to, to practice, practice and practice. I do lots of swimming, uh, running, cycling, uh, stretching, some of yoga, some parts of yoga, like basically stretching and, and then trying to uh, feel flexible. Lots of sleep is obviously important the night before the very uh, difficult shoot. I, I guess before any shoot, it's, it's uh, eight hours of sleep is very important uh, to be fresh on the set. Uh, and yeah, lots of practice, lots of practice. I walk a lot, I run a lot, I swim almost every day. Uh, and yes, these kind of exercises uh, are very important. And uh, carrying the, the rig and ca carrying the static and Trinity and practice, uh, whether at home, whether in the studio, in the warehouse, uh, uh, strengthens those muscles, you know, uh, certain muscles in your body, especially lower back. So after a while, after a while, you don't even feel it. You don't feel it. Yes, after a long day on the Trinity, I come home, I feel tired, my lower back is, you know, a little bit sore, but after next morning, I'm okay. Yeah. yeah cool well i mean it's important to know that there is some also concerns regarding that you know because uh for some people they just think that uh that it's something that you know it's super easy and then that everything is handled uh you know automatically by the rig but it's not so uh, it's important to mention that like even for the trinity they asked me tom can i buy trinity 2 and become trinity operator i always Tell people you should be for a few years definitely steadicam operator first because first you will learn how to work with a smaller rig uh, you will know how to balance it you will know how to frame it and everything and then you progress to trinity because it has this all fancy gyros and stuff perfect horizon and stuff so lots of people think i will turn that on and i will just walk and it will do the job but it's not really like that it, 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 there's lots of things happening behind the head uh, about balancing about walking about framing uh, uh, lots of things are, you have to take under consideration. Uh, so yeah, I suggest and I advise people start with a Steadicam, be a good Steadicam operator, and if you like it, if you think that's for you, then later you can you can move on uh, and, and become Trinity operator. So uh, one also thing that's important uh, to mention is that uh, are there any specific requirements when you're using the Trinity system? Is it comp compatible with a wide range of equipment or is it just working with, you know, high end cameras? What's the idea? Can you use a DSLR with it or not? A very good question. Obviously, uh, Trinity one and two uh, uh, being Ari products, it's perfectly designed for Ari cameras. Uh, Ari uh, Alexa uh, Mini, Ari Alexa Mini LF, uh, uh, new Alexa 35, they perfectly fit inside the, the, the ring of the Trinity. Balancing is so easy with them, that, that, that works well. Uh, when it's all Ari, uh, Ari Motor, WC4, and, uh, you know, uh, and, and so on. Now, it gets trickier when you get third party, cameras, motors, and so on. Like, for instance, lots of times we have filter nucleus and how to power filter from DTAP and so on. Uh, personally, I have Red Komodo. Uh, so here it's Red Komodo in the Trinity one. Yes, it, it, it can be balanced. As you can see, it can be balanced. No issues. Uh, this is not even Ari lens. This is a uh, Rockingham Scene lens. Uh, this is a uh, small rig mud box uh, and the sweet battery. So yes, it can be balanced. It's all about how you how you balance it. Uh, maybe it's little bit uh, left heavy or a little bit right heavy but then you add counterweights here or counterweight there or you move the whole camera and you can uh, balance it over here i have a uh, sony fx9 i also have sony fx9 again it's perfectly balanced as you can see of course it takes time you have to feed a little bit up and down left right uh, i have to put lots of weights on the top because trinity 2 now has the motors 24 motors down here so it's uh, very bottom heavy so no matter how you put the camera, it will always be so much bottom heavy that you need to counterbalance it on the top. But again, look, it, it works perfectly. Sony FX9, Rockin' on Scene, this is uh, Tilta uh, Madbox. So so it does it does work. Ideal situation is obviously Ari with Ari. Then, then it uh, communicates, then you can control even uh, zoom motors from here, uh, and Iris motors with Elbas. But if you don't have uh, Ari camera, it doesn't matter. Can you put DSLR? Yes, you can put DSLR. You just have to put some something like a cage, build a cage around it. If you don't have a camera, you can still practice at home. You can put a DSLR with, with some Canon lens, but you just need to build it heavier, put some weight around it, cage and, and, and things like that. I, I'm not just doing steady camming. I'm also doing regular camera work. So that's why I have 
cameras, lenses and stuff. So for me, it's a little bit easier to practice at home. I just pull out the camera from, from the cabinet and then I practice. But definitely you can put uh, any camera uh, uh, here. You just have to make sure. That's why we have gear checks though. That's why we have gear checks. Is it, it, it going to fit through the ring or not? If you put it on the Steadicam, you can put anything on the Steadicam. There's no height limitations here. So camera can be whatever funny look, you know, red cameras mostly are uh, taller than the wider, like like uh, red weapon and red dragon and so on, they are taller than wider. So that doesn't matter anything if it fits here. But for the Trinity, we always, it's very essential to have the gear check. So we, we try to fit which plates we're going to have, where are the rods going to be for the motors, focus motors on the top or the bottom. So yeah, uh, we, we go to the warehouse, um, rental house, and then we do the gear check. I had a Sony Venice here. I had Alexa Mini LF. I had Alexa. So is LF, it uh, is it is it the Mark. old adage if you if you prepare to fail you, pre you if you fail to prepare you prepare to fail right? That's correct. That's correct. Uh, we all have to uh, come ready to the set and uh, check and double check and triple check everything. Uh, yes, but I had all sorts of uh, different cameras here, and so far everything uh, works well. Cool. And uh, I wanted to ask you in terms of uh, in terms of, you know, when you're walking on different types of terrain. So I know that when we worked together on one of my films, uh, you had a very difficult time with uneven terrain. At that time, it was the Steadicam, not the uh, Trinity, because now we're watching uh, some footage that you're doing in the desert and we're seeing dunes and so on. Well, so yeah. how, how does it work when you're when you're dealing with uneven terrain like sand and, you know, uh, things like that when it becomes difficult to walk? Could you talk a little bit about that and how how to tackle a problem like that? Uh, yes, uh, I talked to the production. I asked them, where are we shooting? Are we shooting on the beach? Do I have to like run near the water? If I'm near the water, then of course I don't want to damage my shoes. I can be barefoot for a bit. Uh, if we are in, uh, in the desert, I have special shoes uh, for the desert. Uh, they are even higher to protect my uh, ankles and uh, and they are like little. To, uh, he grip, maybe he can put. Sometimes there was a shot in a desert. They put lots of uh, like a, a plywood on the on the on the sand, so I can walk on the mm -hmm. sand, on, on the sand. The most difficult one I would I would say was climbing on the on the dunes, because as, as you're yeah. climbing on the dunes, you are sinking in as, as you are without anything, let alone having a, another 30 kilos on your body. So I think the most difficult would be soft sand when when you are climbing up up the ways you can do you can you can help with the mesh you can use a net like a mesh very very thick uh, and then you just spread it inside the sand and cover it with the sand so you can walk and so on that happened only once that i was like really sinking deep and i i hardly kept the pace with the, with the actor but most of the times when we shoot in the desert it's just like a low sand and stuff not much on the dunes um another so, even terrain would be like grass yeah. or grass or some muddy muddy part there there, there is a part in in the there was like a, like I was actually sinking in the mud. That was the hardest one. And then I had to put another effort to lift my foot out of the mud to make the step and to make another step. And I'm sinking and and, and at the same time trying to to keep the the, the Trinity <laughs> stable and still while I was fighting to get out of the mud. Yeah, these things are the worst. Of course, asphalt or or, or the beach with soft sand is easy. Yeah. So, I mean, so I guess you worked on, on many different, uh, you know, types of terrain and many different types of production. So could you talk a little bit for um, people that are like, you know, indie filmmakers and beginning filmmakers, uh, because obviously they might not have access uh, to such equipment. But if they do have a little bit of budget, some of them might uh, be able to afford the Trinity system. So considering that you've worked with a lot of different people, um, could you talk a little bit of your experience with maybe uh, lower end productions and how people use that or they're using that to create one one oneers or shot or long takes where actually everything is happening and the camera never cuts. Uh, could you talk a little bit about that so that people uh, have an idea of how they can creatively use uh, the Trinity system and that type of stabilization? Most challenging, but at the same time, the most rewarding takes would be a, a one take film because it's so hard to, to uh, synchronize everybody, including myself, actors, uh, sound men, focus, uh, everything, my shadows or actor shadows, uh, try to make it perfect in, in one take film. 
and I, I went to Kuwait uh, once. Uh, we did a one take film, uh, <laughs> and it was uh, for some school. Uh, it was actually for the National Day uh, of Kuwait. Uh, they, they wanted to present one, uh, one school, they wanted to present uh, a song for the National Day. So we have uh, 200 kids singing Kuwaiti national song, and we have so many elements the, the, the boards, the panels are moving, the doors are opening, the whole uh, room is changing, and I have to run with the Trinity. Any little mistake from whoever, we have to do it again. And uh, we did it around 85 times. Yes, it, it was a two day shoot. So 47 times first time, first day and around 45 times second day. That's how hard it was because one kid was just like fixing her hair. We had to start again. Then the smoke didn't come into the scene. We have to start again. Then the light, light cue didn't quite work right. We have to start again. Then I tripped over something that we had to start again and so on and so on. So it was like 47 times we had to repeat, but at the end it looked beautiful. Like it looks like, wow, uh, so many elements from there. Uh, it, it's the, the really hardest things to do. And the most frustrating is like the last three seconds, like I'm like, oh my, I'm thinking myself, oh gosh, we did it, we did it. As I'm pulling out the last scene, the door, the two guys supposed to pull with the wire, one door closed, the other one didn't close. He's trying to pull and the door is shaking. And he, he cannot close the door as I pull out with the Trinity. And the director said again, and it's just like, oh man, <laughs> this never ends. So yes, these one takers are really, really fun. I do yeah. them, and, and it's really challenging to do them, but they're really, really fun, and they are so rewarding once once you do it right. I am preparing actually this summer one one taker as well in Serbia, by the way. So yeah, nice. <laughs> I heard a little bit about that too. Yeah, should be a very interesting project. Yeah, I, I mean, I've been on big feature films. I went to India. That was interesting. I was on the Shah Rukh Khan movie Jawan that is coming out in, in uh, September. So first time I come to, to India, first time in India last May, and I come to the set with 500 people. I'm like, oh, gosh, what is this? Like 500 people roaming around, uh, like, like organized chaos, but everybody knows what to do. Amazing set. And I was Trinity operator with Phantom Flex, a very heavy camera. We didn't have the cable then because I didn't make cable for phantom cameras, so I have to have a heavy battery and then on the top weights. And in India, they work with the six by six mud boxes, massive old motors, uh, uh, sea motion. It was a really heavy setup. My arm was like on the brink. I thought like like if I add another hundred grams, it's gonna it's gonna like break. Um, yeah. But it was it was the most amazing experience to me. Uh, it's something like Indiana Jones, all these like like a crazy faces and and the fire around and then I'm running after some villains there and then they're shooting around. That was like a really amazing experience. Like around 500 people on the set. It, it was it, it 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 was insane. It was insane. I can't wait for that movie to come out in September. Uh, another interesting one was in Abu Dhabi just a few months ago. It, it was called Inspector Jamshed. Now it's in the editing. Also amazing movie, lots of fighting scenes going on. Uh, it's amazing director, uh, 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 Fahad Noor and uh, director of photography, Mark Hobbs. We were like a team. So every day before the, the shoot, we were analyzed. Tom, shall we do this with the Steadicam or the Trinity? So the director said, Trinity. I'm like, okay, but why do you need Trinity? You see, just two guys are coming and walking and talking. You don't need 360, you don't need to jeep up and down. And he's like, okay, yes, you're right, Steadicam. So what happened is on the set, I come with both Trinity and Steadicam and I, and I said, okay, what is your shot? What do I have to do? Do I have to jeep up and down from an actor? Do I have to push through some car or whatever? If it's just simple walk and talk, then I said, let's use the Steadicam. You know, I have both on the set, so we just move the camera because the plates are again universal, thanks to Ari. Uh, I just move from Steadicam to Trinity or the other way around. So we, every morning we sit down, we, we see the scenes, what we can do, or they're just sitting down and talking. Okay, that's the steady cam. Or they're, they're like running through the corridor. I said, why don't we do this like in the, in the inception? Uh, you know, the whole thing spins and the director is like, yeah, that's a crazy idea. I'm like, okay, that's Trinity 2. Let me pull out Trinity 2 because I can just click the button and then the whole whole corridor in the hotel is gonna spin 360. And then, you know, things like that. Yes, it, it takes coordination and, and teamwork with your director, with your director of photography, obviously with the focus puller, because sometimes he's going nuts, like, Tom, what are you doing? You are all over the place. You go in and out. Tell me what you want to do. So I tell him, I'm going to rush to the guy. I'm going to stop. I'm going to pull out. I'm going to go around him. So I have to talk to my focus puller as well, give him roughly idea what I'm going to do. And I work with some really good focus pullers. Sometimes I'm surprised how in the world he can nail this sharp, you know, and I do something unpredictable that even I didn't know I'm going to do it, but they do it. So it's a, it's a really teamwork, uh, you know, when you see a shot, whoever did it, not me, but anybody, it's, it's really a teamwork between director, director of photography, focus puller. My assistants, I have two great assistants, they help me because Trinity, if I bring Trinity and Steadicam 
and the stack and the superpose. There is so many little uh, items, uh, so much equipment, uh, batteries. They help me, you know, build that, uh, assemble that, tidy up afterwards. They they ride my segway when I when I'm pushing the Trinity and the other around. So so I have a great team. I have a great team for all this in order to achieve what what the, the shot needs to be. Fantastic. We have also a lot of uh, behind the scenes. So now we're watching uh, live all of the shots that you're doing the way that they're recorded at the top frame and at the bottom frame. We're looking at, uh, you know, how it is when you're okay. working. So we see the top shot is the final shot and the bottom shot is how you're moving to achieve this shot. So we, we see exactly different terrains and how you're in different terrains and uh, operating in the desert, in uh, operating on some stairs, going up the stairs, and so on. So different environments and and uh, different things that are happening there. Um, I guess one thing that would be interesting also to, to talk about is, do you have any notable projects that, that you worked on and maybe some uh, difficulties or problems that arose from working on a specific uh, shot that, that was complicated or not? Uh, could you talk a little bit about that? Because we see you working in different environments, uh, you know, in extreme heat. And then some places we see you wearing a, a cap and a big, you know, uh, airy, uh, airy equipment to protect you from the wind and whatnot. So can you talk a little bit about these elements and how they affect the final shot? Because that's what uh, our viewers are looking at now. Uh, from technical point of view, I would say shooting in the aeroplane uh, would be really, really tough. I did a commercial for Qatar Airways, for Oman Airways, for Etihad Airways, uh, for Emirates Airways. Oh, yeah. Well, I, I, actually, it's good that you're talking about that one. What we're going to try to have is our director to put the shots of uh, the plane so we can have the the planes with the, uh, the, the plane at the same time while you're talking so that uh, our viewers could see the... Um, the, the shots so let's let's give him a second while he loads that up what happens is in the plane as we all know uh, plane uh, planes they have a very narrow uh, 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 middle aisle so for you just to walk it's it's enough now if you put the steadicam arm and the steadicam auto trinity it's it's almost impossible to to to, to walk properly so what I did in a, in one commercial for Oman Airways, which is not really recommended and it's not proper way of doing it, I put the sled in front of me and then I walk like a duck and <laughs> and have, have, have carry camera and the sled came in front of me and I was approaching the flight attendant and she smiled and something. The shot looked perfect, but but the way I did it, my back hurt and stuff because that's not the way how you operate sled cam. You have to put it next to you, closer to your body, on your left side or your right side if you're goofy, whatever. But not in front of you. That's a big no-no. But you know, sometimes you have to improvise if you want to do a correct shot because there is no way you can put Steadicam set next to you in in a in an airplane in a, in the economy class. Uh, that that's the most challenging one, I would say, shooting in the plane. A very very small space, and then all the crew is there, and you where to put the equipment, where to put the stand for your Trinity and Steadicam. That that has to be near you know the area where the door is. That just a little bit more wide area. Then from there you have to walk with the Trinity to your place. I, I think that's very challenging in the plane. Uh, the most challenging one in general, I think it would be during the, the lockdown and Corona. Uh, we still had one project going on in, uh, in uh, Abu Dhabi. Uh, we had to wear masks. Now, that was in uh, June and July and August, and it was like 47, 48 degrees outside, and nobody knew how Corona was going to affect us and stuff. We were all worried, obviously, so I always wore masks. So walking, walking with the steady cam in the heat and the humidity is already tough and, and, and very, uh, you know, challenging. And you are like breathing hard and, and, and so on because I have to run after the guy. And now when you add on the top of that the, the, the mask, <laughs> that was really, really hard. And you are sweating and you cannot breathe properly, but you have to wear the mask. I think that was really hard. That was the hardest thing I, I had to go through, obviously. But uh, yes, good thing is that's, that's behind us. Uh, so... Great, great. I mean, there is also we have uh, some of the uh, behind the scenes shots that you sent to us from uh, from uh, commercials that you worked on because you worked on many different commercials. So there is a, a behind the scenes where uh, I th I believe it's the Coca Cola project, right? For uh, Coca Cola, where uh, where you worked on that project. Could you talk a little bit about that project and how you used Trinity there?
front of the Burj Khalifa and obviously she didn't know so I have to catch that moment when he approaches to her you know kneels down and this was being projected on, on Burj Khalifa so it was lots of going on it, it's like almost a live thing going on so you try to to implement all these movements lots of people around you there were another cameras on the running on the on the train uh, and, and, and so on uh, but but we, we did it well it was all good we had a couple of rehearsals but it's it, it was a fun project yeah the, these are those small little like commercials in in dubai i did commercials for telecoms like for do for etisalat and and for do music videos my favorite would be rita ora rita ora was in dubai a few years ago she did a music video new look she was so nice you know down to earth uh, she said hi i'm rita i'm like Hi, I'm Tom. You know, it's like like friends, and then we, you know, it, it gives you this like like a, you know, it breaks the ice, and you can I guess perform better and and, and so on. When somebody so so famous is in front of you, you always trying to do your best. Me, hi, I'm Rita Ora, and I said hi, I'm, I'm Tom, <laughs> and that's yeah. and then we start rolling. So it was fun. Yeah, there are lots of these interesting. Shahrukh Khan was in in town. I did a, a few few things with Shahrukh Khan. He's very famous, um, obviously actor in in India. He's like Tom Cruise of India. So everybody knows him here in this part of the world. Uh, he... Yeah, Tom, for some reason we can't hear you anymore. No, we still don't hear you. All right, we'll we'll just be right back, guys. Just for Tom to fix his mic, something happened, so uh, we'll be we'll be right back. with Tom we just had a slight issue with the sound but we're back so so Tom you've discussed um how you worked on different types of projects so ideally now it would be nice to to give a a, a small you know roundup of the entire conversation so for people that are interested in um in you know working on indie films or working you know on smaller budgets do you recommend using the trinity as uh, as a tool or you think it's uh, it's too much for uh, for beginners
do with this. With this. Smaller productions, indie filmmakers, students, and so on, I would suggest they can use uh, Ronin, Ronin S, Ronin S2 or Ronin S3 or on the older one, Ronin MX, something like that, if they want to achieve uh, these smooth movements in a, in a, in a small, low-budget productions. Okay, and uh, in well, terms... It's very expensive. I mean, it's very, very expensive uh, gear, to be honest. Uh, and, uh, as well, it takes years and years of hard working and with regular steady cam and, and, and saving to buy such a, such a system, you know, such a setup. And yeah, you so you... Setup, you know, you don't build this overnight unless you win the lottery. And then, yes, you win the lottery so you can buy, uh, you know, yeah. whatever you like. But if you just work as a regular camera operator and a steady cam operator, then of course it takes years. You buy something, then you save up, then you buy another one, then something else comes up better, whatever. Then you buy that, then you buy Segway or, or a rickshaw. I have actually a rickshaw as well. It's there in the box. I bought a rickshaw just recently. So it's all these things I've been buying and investing and working with and saving up and investing again over, over 10 years. Yeah, so it's not like it doesn't happen overnight. You know, my first Trinity I bought 2018 and I worked a lot with it and I paid it off and I saved up when the Trinity 2 came up and I bought Trinity 2 and so on. So yes, yes, all these things are like, you know, investments here or there as, as, as you think that you might need. Then the Super Force came out from Mari, I'm like, oh man, that, that's going to be amazing. Now I can do some really crazy low shots. Then you see how much it costs, then you again try to work harder and make more money to, to buy something. And it's like endless circle, you know. You work more and then you get busy more, but then you spend more. But uh, I love my work. Uh, it's really uh, it's my passion, and I always like to challenge myself. How, how can I do this? What equipment I can invest into to make my shots better, to to, to make the, the film look better, and so on. Nice, and um, you know, also one thing that I that like to to people to know is. Can you give an advice for aspiring filmmakers that uh, want to maybe specialize in uh, operating the Trinity or any kind of uh, stabilization? Because we talked about the training at the very beginning, but we didn't mention uh, how much time you spent to actually perfect the craft itself. So it would be interesting if you could talk a little bit about that. Definitely suggest the workshop. Uh, Ari has uh, also, if you go to ari.com, uh, page uh, you can you can actually book yourself they they have a couple of times in munich or, or different parts there are also certified ari trinity trainers that you can arrange with them fly to munich or or wherever in uh, in the world uh, and you do the two days for, for the trinity is two days training but they they are assuming that you already know steady cam you see um that's why it's only two days because then it's purely technical about how to balance uh Trinity. So I would I would say uh, take the take the workshop. Definitely take the workshop. There are different workshops that, as I said, from Ari. There is from Tiffen Steadicam. There is uh, workshops. They have all over the world, like in in Europe, in in America, in uh, Asia, and so on. So take that class. Take that workshop. Learn basics. Learn the basic physics. You know, pendulum effect, drop down time, uh, dynamic balance, and all these things. Learn that first. If you don't have money to buy on rig, uh, buy maybe second hand. There are lots of uh, now guys who are selling. Some guys are retiring. Some are bu buying newer rigs, so they are selling older ones. There is all, a huge market of used Steadicam gear on, on Facebook and, 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 and Steadicam forums where you can buy used rigs. So start with something small. Don't buy a $100,000 uh, Trinity 2 and start with it. Buy something smaller, cheaper. Invest into smaller second-hand stuff. That's how I did it. I, I, I my, my first rig was actually a rental, uh, and I was going to a rental house uh, and, and practicing there. Then I bought a second-hand rig, uh, and when I thought that I okay, I'm good now, I'm good to go. Then I start buying brand new stuff and so on. So yes, and then 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 buy the second-hand uh, smaller rig, cheaper rig, and start practice practicing. If you don't have a bigger camera like like Red or Sony or or Ari, just just put a DSLR. There are lots of guys you can find on YouTube. They are practicing steady cam and balancing. They are pretty good with the DSLR. It just needs a little bit extra weight on it, and you use whatever zoom lens. You can even change the focal length and practice with with 50 mm or or out to 24 mm, and just keep learning and practicing and practicing. I mean, never say yes, I'm good. No, no, you're never good enough that that you don't have to do it next day or next month and practice again. I'm still practicing. My rigs are basically they are assembled here. They, they are not assembled here for this conversation now they are actually assembled because i always test something i practice i change something i try balancing with that 
I try to put different lenses on it, and then yes, yeah, sometimes I, I try at home. I, I, I work with something with a long post, uh, super post, or, or a short post. Uh, I have a movie coming up where there's lots of like a kung fu movement. So with that one, I will use that very very short post because then I'm more agile and, and around you know fighters moving on. So I'm testing that. I'm pra uh, practicing that. Then I sometimes pack my stuff, my bags my boxes and then I go to a rental house and then I practice in the rent rental house where it's the biggest space because in my apartment there's not much space obviously. Sometimes I go in the garage actually and then I practice Segway. I'm, I'm chasing, uh, you know, in the garage <laughs> something just to practice uh, and, and it's something that, that, that you need to practice always. It's not, uh, you cannot say yes, I learned now Segway and I'm good and I can now, you know, leave it. I, I, I feel that you always have to practice something new because there are always some different shots they, they, they ask you to do super high, super low, go inside the car, go backwards, down the stairs and stuff. So all these things are really important to, to practice all this. And uh, definitely exercise, definitely exercise. If you want to be steady chem operator, don't smoke. <laughs> don't yeah. smoke. Live healthy. Diet is important. Uh, what you eat. Uh, because they say what, what we eat is what we are. So uh, diet is really exactly. important. I to eat healthy. I really try to eat healthy. I really try to avoid junk food and soda. So you can't eat uh, like muffins and, uh, you know, uh, cakes and, uh, you know, pizzas and, you know, ice cream and expect that you're going to be uh, in good shape to, to, to do that. There is a couple of things that I've seen on Instagram where you have this guy training on a, on a treadmill running with all the camera gear and everything you know, at full speed to kind of like train. And that's how the camera department or the camera guys are constantly exercising. I mean, obviously it's a joke, but pretty much it is because it's a high endurance job. It requires for you to constantly be in shape, to constantly, you know, um, you, you know, adapt to new equipment, adapt to new situations, adapt to different types of, you know, scenarios. I mean, also before we sign off today, so that we don't just talk about the Trinity, uh, Tom, you can also talk about working underwater, for example, because you're also a certified underwater diver and you use uh, different types of housings to to record underwater so maybe you can mention uh, quickly what you know how it is to work underwater and what type of shots that you've captured underwater because as opposed to the work walking on the ground and the trinity and stabilizing on ground must be completely different when you're stabilizing underwater eh? i love uh, i love actually underwater shoots because uh, no matter how heavy camera is it's always neutrally buoyant in front of me so there's no way that i'm carrying right it's actually floating in front of me it's very relaxing. Uh, it's quiet down there. All I can hear is like breathing going on. Um, of course, you have to know. Uh, first, you need to be a scuba diver. You need to. I, I've been diving for like 20 years. I, I, I did my course in Mexico like 2001 or 2002, and ever since I'm a diver. So now I combine uh, work and pleasure. I do lots of diving in in uh, UAE and uh, around the world basically uh, for fun. Uh, everything from Belize, Blue Hole. Uh, even Alaska, I did diving in Alaska down to the Philippines and, and uh, Malaysia and, and, and the Caribbean, all, all over the Caribbean. So I actually combined work and pleasure because I'm a cinematographer, I love filming, I have Red Komodo, then I purchased the underwater housing for Red Komodo, lights, uh, tether cable for the feet, for director to see uh, above on the, on the surface. Uh, so I combine actually work and pleasure and I do get busy uh, with, with underwater jobs as well. And I really like it because that day I, I am really relaxed. My back is not hurting. I'm not too tired from carrying 35 kilos. Uh, it's not hot. I'm not sweating in the water. And I, I love water. I love. I really love water. I love diving. And, and this is perfect combination for me doing underwater cinematography. There are some shoots in Dubai yeah, in water. Uh, some are in the pool, like promo for new properties. And the kids jump in the pool of that villa, whatever. But there are a lot, there are some that we are doing in the sea. Uh, yeah, some documentaries we did in the sea uh, for properties and, and, and stuff. Uh, when there is no underwater shoot, I still take my underwater gear because I have three different underwater housings, even for Alexa Mini. But then I take for DSLR and then I just take pictures for myself. I enjoy uh, diving and, and I'm just doing the, the diving for myself and, and pictures, underwater pictures for, for myself. Great, great. Well, that's uh, it was uh, lovely going through all of your experience, Tom, today. And uh, I hope that uh, 
it really helped illuminate uh, the path to some future filmmakers that are interested in you know stabilizing their shots with uh, a different type of equipment uh, considering here the Irie Trinity obviously and uh, once again I'd like to uh, to ask you before the very end if there's one single advice you'd like to give to future filmmakers um, what would it be before we sign off there is this quotation I would like to say a quote uh, 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 never stop learning because bef because the day you stop learning your professionalism dies and never give up really never give up uh, just keep learning keep practicing keep practicing and keep, keep practicing and you will you will get there you will you will you will achieve your dreams but you just have to be really uh, ambitious and, and never give up that's that's what I did so there you have it, guys. Thanks, Tom, so much for uh, joining us today on this session. And uh, you got all the advice you need, so never give up. Uh, but before you give up, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel so that you can follow along our cinematic journey and get some new and fresh advice uh, every week and join us on future live streams. Uh, until then, Tom, thank you uh, for joining us once again and thank everyone uh, for joining and watching this live stream in the near future. And uh, until then, don't give up, stay strong, and we'll see you.